Hello there, everyone. The Andrada here, and welcome back to episode 115 of our Enigmatica 6 Expert Let's Play series. Man, it's been, I, I haven't recorded consistently for the past couple of days, so I, I forget what episode we're on. Uh, anyway, today we are working on getting our Enderman Spawner Core set up going, uh, so that way we can start working on getting true wireless power. No more entangled blocks and everything. We'll have cross dimensional wireless power. I'm excited. Let's get started. Welcome back, my friends, to another traditional night here in the world of the Andrada, where the door is always getting on my nerves. That's what's happening all the time. Anyway, where today we are going to uh, work on some stuff. So in between episodes, I did a little bit of prep work, a little bit of crafting and everything, because we are uh, in need of, well, a couple different things, right? Mainly right now, my uh, my goal at the moment, I, I eventually I want to get this processing setup done for our HDPE and getting that going. But what I would like to do is be able to uh, get wireless power set up um, correctly, right? Uh, actually go through power and get the uh, what are they called? Power ender cells, not in 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 ender the uh, ender ender gates and everything like that and start working on getting these going. However, in order to get these, um, we require these ender cores. All right. So ender cores are required to do this process. And in order to get these ender cores, we have to set up a enderman spawner in order to uh, suck up all the endermen and turn them into a spawner core so we can we can do this. Everything else here is fairly easy. Look, it's just ender pearls and blaze. This is just black ceramic tile and dielectric rods the system knows how to do all this stuff except for making these ender cores ultimately my goal here is um i want to get our god shard production uh escalated because i want to upgrade all of our power stuff because it's kind of sort of been a little bottleneck for everything um is the fact that we are currently stuck at neotic tier here and in order to progress through the other tiers, in order to get those, uh, what are these things called? I always forget the name of these. Energizing rods upgraded. If we want to upgrade the Neotic tier, we have to go with Spirited. And to unlock the Spirited tier, we require Spirited capacitors, which require Spirited crystals. Four of them per, which requires a Osiris God Shard per two. So it's two Osiris God Shards per uh, spirited capacitor. And if we take a look at our god shards, I've been manually mining uh, Nebu ore so we can get this done, but we only have 26. So theoretically, we can make 13 capacitors and that's it. So we need to get this uh, get this process accelerated. And in order to do so, our best and easiest way is going to be to go into Atom and set up an excavator from uh uh, immersive engineering. The excavator is a uh, heavy machinery item that forms like so. There's a schematic for it. We'll use that to build it and everything. But basically what it does, it's kind of like if the uh, in the uh, digital miner from Mechanism, but it also, op it, it's like that, but it's like the pump jack, right? So the pump jack there, it is currently pumping up crude oil. There is not crude oil sitting below us. There's no reservoir of crude oil down below in the real world that has a thousand buckets of crude oil down there. It's a, it's, it's a void crude oil, essentially. Um, but we, uh, we sample, we do some core samples, we find the crude oil, we can set up our excavator there, and it does the thing. Same thing for, I'm sorry, for our pump jack and it does the crude oil the same mechanic works for our excavator uh, and but instead of looking for crude oil we would look for um uh nebu or nakata is what it's called if we take a look inside of our book which i think i shoved in here right if we look inside of our book it'll tell you uh if you go to your overview and resources and your uh, mineral deposits, you can scroll through here and you can find out what each deposit is going to get. So an archaic dig site is going to be in the nether that gets you a 40% mix, ancient debris, gravel, yada, yada, yada. The one that we're looking for is uh, Nakata. It is added in with this pack and everything, but it's a 30% chance to get Nebu, 50% gold, 20% uranium. So we need to find that in the in Atom. How do you find it? Two, way, two ways. You can use your core sample drill here, uh, and just like we did for our pump jack, 
however, requires power. You need power in order to be able to do this. We don't have power available to us in a, in a different dimension, right? Uh, because we can't set up an entangled block that has power that's bound to our energy cell. It's interdimensional travel only, not uh, yeah, interdimension, same dimension, not extra dimensional. So we can't use that. So what else can you use? Well, mineral survey tools from immersive engineering, fairly simple to craft, uh, and they're fairly simple to use. As you can tell, I uh, used a lot of this, and I'll be honest with you, this is the second one. I, well, you'll see what happened when we come in here. So we come into Atom, and the way that these mineral tools work is you just find a block. It has to be a valid block for it, but you just hold down, and it'll tell you, Bam, there are traces of bituminous coal here. Uh, and that's going to be what's inside of this chunk. So you're going to find bituminous coal in this chunk. You can come over here to this chunk. Uh, we're going to find uh, there's bituminous coal here to the northwest. No mineral traces are in this area and yada, 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 so on and so forth. It's faster to do this than it is to set up your core sample drill every single time. However, oh my goodness. Here is our exploration. I went south. I said, okay, I'm gonna check every chunk. I'm just gonna go in a line, chunk south. South, 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 south. Oh my gosh, finally found a Nakata vein. 3,000 blocks away? Are you kidding me, Charles? My goodness. Uh, so yeah, anyway, but I, I just sat there and I just I had my chunk boundaries on and I'm just like, nope, nope, nope. Nope. And eventually we got it. And uh, so there is a Nakata vein down that way. We're going to actually pop home and teleport over there because we're going to try and set up our core sample drill just to validate that everything's going to be uh, correct. So I have Nakata vein here in which we have it set up. Um, I did set up a uh, I thought I set up a no mobificator, the uh, mob lantern. This is the center block. Yeah. My Mega Torch and Feral Flare Lantern. So we shouldn't get any mobs in this area, though we did. So I don't know if uh, that actually works. Maybe it doesn't respect Atom as a valid dimension for this. Check out how fast my sword, my uh, bow is now. I love it. Yeah, maybe the Mega Torch doesn't work in Atom, or this is just outside of its range. Those guys are pretty far out there. But anyway, so this is where this is at. What I want to do is set up our core sample drill and just validate that this is going to have Nakata in it. And what I did was I charged up an energy cell. We had one of these sitting in our uh, basement or in our system. So I charged that up. So this should fill this with power. And we can then go ahead and sample this area with a lever. There we go. Oh, you don't even need the lever. So that can go away. This is going to do its sampling thing, and we should get the uh, core sample that says that there is Nakata in here. Perfect. It looks like it. The sample is like Nebu looking. 100% saturation of Nakata. It doesn't say how much is in here, though. I think the excavator will tell you how many ores are in the area. But yeah, check that out. No flu. Oh, there it is. 482,235 ores of Nakata. Right. So that's a lot of ore. Uh, and with a 30 percent split of Nebu, that's a lot of Nebu. That's some like 100,000 Nebu or something like that. So, yeah, I think we're going to be OK with our Nebu over in this area. We just need to get our excavator set up, but we can't do it until we actually get power. Oh, I also can't place this core sample down. Interesting. OK, that's fine. I don't need to. Um, so this is where our excavator is going to sit. It's going to sit inside of this chunk here, and it's just going to mine up all the stuff for us. We'll get an ender chest uh, to dump all the stuff back into the system. But in order to be able to do this, we need to get wireless power because the excavator takes 10,000 RF per tick. So it's not just wireless power that we need. We are going to need something that can handle 10,000 RF per tick, which is going to be at least the blazing tier. Uh, but we're going to just we'll, we'll, we'll tier up as far as we can. Do these require previous tier no so we can just go straight to nitro tier it doesn't really make too much of a difference uh except for the fact that you require weak blood shards which we have not automated yet we need to get uh occultism automated and the afrit summoning and these uh these things automated I, this part should be fairly easy it's this part that we're going to have a little challenge with but as you can see uh it's on my to-do list because we have dimensional storage crystals which are also in occultism automation but anyway that's what i did in between episodes that's where we're at so it is in like the very near future we're going to get that set up we will probably set it up with blazing just to let it go and then you know we'll that way we can have it running and then that way we will work on the other stuff in between uh processes 
Make sense? I hope so. I hope I'm explaining myself well with all that. Uh, so I guess that can go back away. We don't need that right now. You can go away. Uh, honestly, the core sample drill is not needed anymore either because we had Nakata there. We can go ahead and put this there. Book can go away and bam. So anyway, back to what we were talking about at the beginning of the episode, we need to get ender cores automated. And so if you look inside of my backpack when we popped in there, I kind of sort of have all of that process set up and ready to go for the most part. Uh, mineral survey tools, you can go away. We're not going to use you anymore. So what we have, I taught the system how to make these empty spawner cores, which is just uh, thermo pneumatic processing of a spawner core, spawner core shell, excuse me, with some memory essence inside of a uh, thermo pneumatic process plant. And then this requires dimensional storage crystals. So this is where this is going to come in. We're going to automate this setup, but we're going to very quickly run out of stuff. Uh, but we can get one set up so we can get the Nebu going. We, I believe we have enough. Oh, we only have two. Oh, wait, no, I already have a spawner core. Haha, -ha, because I made one. So we only have two of those left, but we'll get our first one. And then I can make a wireless uh, thingamaduty unless... The only other thing I can think of, we do need to get the uh, this thing going. Do you require you require a flux block, which is a pain because those require ender cores each or. Uh, you still require a flux block, man, we're going to need. Uh, all right, well, we're going to have to at least do one more set of these manually before we automate it. So I'll work on that in between episodes. Anyway, so let's get started. Uh, so as always, we're going to pop over to our mob tower because it's going to be dealing with mobs. So we're going to come over here. Uh, we're out of room in the mob tower, though. So if anything else needs to come into the mob tower, we are out of luck down here because we've already filled this area up. We've got this area for our uh, blood magic. We got this area here, which I made a big old hole. Uh, let's do some stone. This is our witches, which is working fairly well. I might add everything's doing doing good and we're we're minimizing lag, which is spawned down here. And then finally, to our bottom level, we have our final area. So we basically this entire chunk we have built out. The only other way we can go is vertical. We can start building above that building. But yeah, we're we're stuck. And this is it. Like one more level below is bedrock. So we are literally as far down as we can go in this. We might be able to and I'm, I'm scared to try it with our teleport. We might be able to teleport below the bedrock, but we don't have really a, a way of flight. So I don't want to do that. Anyway, so what do we need to do? Well, OK, so similar process to how we have before. We have a spawner. We're going to agitate it. And I have an Enderman egg. Enderman egg was very easy to get. I think I even got another one, maybe. Yeah. Uh, go to the end with your capturing five and just start punching Enderman. And you, you kill them all in one shot and you get Enderman eggs like like candy. So that's what I did. So we have candy like Enderman eggs. So we're going to go ahead and set our cardboard box down pull this off. It is currently a zombie spawner. It has been automated I, or uh, modified. I did all the stuff that is needed for it so that way we don't have to worry about it. And then we're just going to convert it over to Enderman. Bam. So now Enderman should be able to spawn in here. And from what I understand, normally an apotheosis spawner will not work unless you put a spawner agitator on there. By putting a spawner agitator on the apotheosis spawner, it treats it as if it was a it was spawned by Pneumaticraft, not Apotheosis, and this will actually work. We're going to validate that, obviously, and everything, uh, but it, it, everything, uh, it points to it should work. That's what you guys in the comments said. In the Discord says the same thing. So we're going to go ahead and get this set up this way. We're going to go ahead and, uh, you know, do the thing. This is going to be Enderman, so we're going to Ender Pearl this. You're going to be the receiver. And we just need to get another one and we'll probably, you know, we'll, uh, we're going to automate this so that it only runs when it needs to. But for now, let's go ahead and do this. Uh, Ender Pearl can go away. I love that I have access to my full system down here. Where is my lever? I had an extra lever. And this should spawn Enderman with no AI, too, which is what I wanted. Come on, buddy. Give me an Enderman. I don't want a tick accelerate because I don't want like tons of Enderman. But. I want some. I just want to validate that it's going to work down here. Hey, there we go. OK, turn off. And there's the Enderman. They have no AI. I wonder if that means they don't like teleport. I don't I have the no looking thing on. So look, they're T posing Enderman anyway. 
So there we go, Enderman spawner set up. We're gonna be good, good to go with that. So what we need to do next is get our vacuum trap set up. This is what's going to uh, get us our cores, right? So we put the spawner core inside of the vacuum trap and it absorbs nearby entities. And that's the question that I have. What does nearby mean? What is the range of the vacuum trap? I don't know. I don't know if the book will tell us. Let's go ahead and reset this and find Pneumatocraft uh, vacuum trap. Insert a non-full, open the vacuum trap door, applying a redstone signal. You can just leave a redstone signal activated at all times, blah, 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 blah. You can blacklist mobs in the mod config, okay. If we give it memory essence, its absorption greatly increases, but yeah, no range. So we're gonna have to figure out, um, volume upgrades are recommended. Wrench it rather than breaking it to preserve and sort of non full. Okay. Yeah. Basically, we're going to have to experiment. My idea was we were going to set it here and then Enderman will spawn in and then it will do the sucky sucky and pull them into it and we'll be good to go there. Um, I don't know which way is actually the front, though. This kind of looks like you would hold this here like Ghostbusters. You'd hold it here and then they'd get sucked in through there. So that's what I'm going to assume is the process here. So what we need to do is get this going. I think I added, um, I had security upgrades. Do I have any volume upgrades? It specifically called out volume upgrades would be recommended here. So we're gonna go ahead and throw some volume upgrades in there. Um, and then we need to get negative pressure going. So a vacuum pump is gonna be what we're gonna use for this. Just like we did with our uh, negative pressure, um, pressure chamber that we have in our factory. We're gonna use a, a vacuum pump to suck the air out of this. And we need to have it set up so that the positive air is over here, the negative air is over here. So this is set up correctly. I don't need to set up a gap or anything in between these. It really doesn't make too much of a difference. Uh, that should be good. And then all we need to do is get ourselves our liquid compressor. And honestly, I don't really need any pipes, I don't think for this setup, because we can just set this right here and give it some LPG, which uh, I did add LPG to our whole liquid setup and everything. So we have LPG available to us in our system now, and I can just put the LPG into this uh, like so. And I only did a simple black hole tank. I don't need 65,000 buckets of LPG. A thousand is fine. So if we do this, and I set this to extract, you're cooking up. Perfect. Uh, I got you security and speed upgrades because I don't want you to blow up. These guys should be fine without security and speed upgrades because they're going to be, uh, you know, it's going to be negative pressure, so it shouldn't make a difference. Though the vacuum pump might want a security upgrade. But anyway, it's vacuuming and this is going. And now this says that when the pressure gets to a certain level, right? That's going to be very annoying. We're going to turn that off. Pneumaticraft leaking gas. Yeah, hush. Vacuum trap. Uh, absor requires negative pressure and an installed spawner core. Okay, so nothing, nothing to do but put the spawner core in here, and then I am assuming it's going to work. Go. Do the thing. And it said shift right click, open up. Oh, stuff happened. Did it? No, nothing's happening. Ah, oh, it still needs to get, it, we need less pressure. Oh, there we go. There's a range button. Oh, okay. So that is the range. Perfect. That That's good. I did not know that existed. So we need to get this set up in the center of the room, basically. Okay, so let's do what it says. We're going to wrench it up so that we don't lose the pressure. Wrench. Wrench, wrench. And you're fine. Just don't run. Okay. So now, now that we know that that's what the range is on the, on the vacuum trap, we can go ahead and set this guy up like here. Turn on the range button again. Yeah, there we go. So if any Endermen spawn over there, they won't get in this, but we can uh, we can get some vector plates and stuff and push them. We can push them into this area. Or I could even close this off, but I, wanna make, I wanted to make sure the Endermen have as enough room to spawn as they need. Uh, so we can leave the vacuum trap set up, or the vacuum pump set up as it was. We just need to now set up pressure tubes so that it can operate. 
Well, that's fine. It's going to leak pressure. That's okay. Uh, let's go ahead and get the vacuum pump set up here. And there we go. Okay, so now this should get negative pressure and it should be good to go. And we just need to leave it open, I think. But it does need to get much lower pressure. Get the pressure below negative 0.5 bar, not enough memory essence. Vacuum trap will be much more efficient with at least 100 millibuckets of memory essence in the tank. Now, does it burn that essence? I can easily extract some. I, ha I, can, I can do this and then this. That's fine, 16 buckets, perfect. But does it does it use it? Does it burn it up? If that's the case, we can figure out how to automate it. We can have we're going to end up binding this anyway with our entangled binder, so that we can push these memory cores in and pull the the the, the spawner cores in and out. Um, but my question becomes, do we need to pump memory essence into this too? Which we can. It's not a big deal to do so at all. But you're going to run. Uh, let's set you to always run. Perfect. You've got speed upgrades. Can you get speed upgrades? Do I have any more speed upgrades? I do. Speed upgrades? Yeah, check that out. There we go. Now you'll lower the pressure. And can you get speed upgrades? Range upgrades. Security volume. So maybe I should get... Let's grab these last three. Uh, Pneumatic craft upgrade. What else do I have? Do I have any security upgrades? Did I teach the system how to make security upgrades? I did not yet. That's okay. Oh, look, it's at below uh, 0.5. So you should be doing the thing. There are Endermen literally right next to you. Is it not counting these Endermen? It looks like it doesn't want to count these Endermen as valid. Minigun upgrade? What? You can put a minigun inside of this thing? Oh, no, that's over there. I was like, why would I need a minigun in my vacuum trap? Uh, so, yeah, okay. Cannot absorb players, drones, or mobs or to spawn from a vanilla spawner. But this is a spawner agitator. So maybe, 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 maybe we need to come right back. Yeah, based on all reports, this should be working. Should be doing the thing. Sucking up the Enderman and capturing them in. So the only thing I can think of is because I modified this, uh, maybe it doesn't like the no AI. I, I'm not 100% sure. Maybe what I should do is, because none of this setup requires, but this requires this. I was going to say I can move this to the end and see if we can't get it to work over there because those are all naturally spawned Endermen, of course. Um, just to validate if it's working. Maybe if I spawn in some more. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't want to count these two for some reason because I tick accelerated it. I don't know. Hopefully, Hopefully, maybe as it spawns in, it's some Enderman. It'll do the thing. Did you do the thing? Have you made any progress? No. And you're this is all within the range, right? Yep. You guys are all inside of the range. So the only thing I can think of, I, I it does have no AI. So maybe the no AI is the problem. But what controlled the AI? I don't remember what. I think it's the linger. Spawner. Maybe no AI is what's causing the problem. So let's go ahead and uh, glyph a freeze. Let's go ahead and craft up one of those and then get a token of sorrow. And put that in the offhand and hopefully that freeze is done. Glyph crafting is kind of slow. Uh, you have five speed upgrades. You have five speed upgrades. Do you you don't take speed upgrades, right? Yeah, I think we're okay. I mean, it's sitting at negative one degree, so. Okay, let's see. If I take off the no AI. And let's go ahead and get rid of all of these guys here. Maybe now it'll work. I just don't want the Enderman to teleport around and stuff, but whatever. It is what it is. Theoretically, they won't be able to get out of this room. Unless they spawn up on the roof. I could uh, max out the range on that thing, too. Do I have range upgrade stock? My goodness, did that do it? <laughs> that was an intense sound. Okay, that it, it was the no AI. Whew. 
Ooh, that was scary. I don't like that sound, but it works. So no AI was the problem. So basically what we need to do is not allow AI or don't do no AI. It does also burn the memory essence. So we got to keep that in mind. But as it spawns Enderman, it's going to do the thing. So we can we can speed this up by tick accelerating it so we can get this core full. Suck them all in. Give me the core. Get out of here. I'm trying to escape, buddy. And I'm assuming it's full. Yes. Okay. Let's go ahead and turn this off. Oh, my. I made a mess. So your Endermen do have to have AI. So just, just something to keep in mind if you're uh, following along and you're setting this up. Do not take the AI away. It will not count them as uh, valid Endermen for the setup. Let's go ahead and take these guys out. We'll finish this off and bam. So basically what we want to do, there's a couple things. We're going to want to go ahead. This redstone link is going to want to move upstairs with us. We're going to set it up with a detector. As you can see here, I have a detector already set up. We're going to have the detector determine, OK, do we have spawner cores in the system when we have, say, uh, probably like 64 Enderman spawner cores in the system? Stop spawning Enderman uh, and then basically maybe even turn this off. We can link all of that to one redstone pearl and not have to worry about it. The only thing I see here is that this did shut off or it closed when I took that core out. I don't know if I like that. Or when this became full, it closed. Something closed this and I didn't do it. Now it does say that if you give it a redstone signal, so what if I just put a lever on it? And you know what? I wonder if the redstone signal is passing through that. And I can't put a lever on this. All right, we'll figure that out. But anyway, we have one full Enderman core, so now we can go ahead and go home. And we're able to get ourselves at least uh, one ender core. Doesn't help us out because we need more ender cores. We need a total of four of them, I do believe. Hey, spawner and empty cores is how you get mob imprisonment tools. Um, but we need at least, you know, we're going to use one of these. But I want to be able to get more because we're going to need to get these flux cores. Oh, the recipe makes eight of them? Okay, okay, okay. So we can do this. All right, so we can actually, we actually can. Okay, cool. The recipe makes eight of those. So if we do this, teach the system how to make this, we throw this in there. Now we're gonna be able to make eight. Okay, I thought it was one. And that's where I was like, man, that's an expensive recipe, but I get the automation and everything, you know, the idea behind it. So let's go ahead and get an ender core. Or let's get the flux block thing. We're gonna need that first, right? Flux core. Which, will, which is going to request making the ender core in the first place. Now, is the ender core a recipe or a quest? Before we do that, uh, nope, nope, nope. I don't see it anywhere, so I just wanted to make sure before I make it, and then I end up, you know, not being able to pick one up from the quest. So we're going to go ahead and craft this, which is going to go ahead and do the thing, and then it's going to start energizing and everything and getting us all that going, which is great. So then from there, we're going to be able to make ourselves a power cell, uh, a power cell the ender cell and we can probably yeah we can go straight to nitro tier uh we might have those capacitors in there we're gonna have this we'll see nitro capacitors i don't have any i do have nitro crystals though so we can make we can make four of those that'll be fine perfect so then we can make this if we get the flux block those flux cores are still cooking up Processing, 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 scheduled. Where are you at? Oh, it's doing the thing. Perfect. And again, it's very slow. That's why I want to upgrade all these to uh, nitro tier. So that way everything's faster. And we'll even upgrade these universal cables when we get to that point and everything. But this is slow. We need to set up more of these, like 20 of them all around here. Just speed this thing up as much as we can. Uh, but anyway, that's basically it for today's episode. So we got the Enderman spawner set up. We figured out how it works. We figured out that it requires... Uh, and or it requires AI in order for it to go. We'll get it all set up. I need to make some more of these guys so that we can craft a few more things uh, real quick before we go. Let's go ahead and I want to go and turn in all my quests. Let me clean up my backpack real quick. Uh, 
lever can sit in there. You can go there. You can go there. Something like that. Let's collect all the quests that we have because we've, again, we've built up quite a few quests that we haven't turned in and everything. Let's see what kind of cool rewards we get. Like we're going to get, oh, we're going to get an energy cell. I thought that was the ender cell. I was about to get excited. Um, let's go ahead and collect all those and see what we ended up getting. We got stone paths. Ooh, augmented capacity runes. Perfect. That's why we collect our quests, right? Wooden pass, blue ice. This is for the uh, Stabberator altar thingy, the incense altar. Uh, Sigil of the Blood Lamp generates lights. Energy cell nitro. Let me shove that in the system because it's going to fill up and drain my system. Uh, block of Neotic Crystals. Perfect. I like that. Block of Uraninite. I like that. A world transporter. I don't know what that quite does. We're going to leave that in my inventory so we can check that out next episode. And we have four augmented runes of capacity. Perfect. Anyway, that's it for today's episode. If you enjoyed, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe. I do, do appreciate it. It really does help out the channel. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.